Ladies and gentlemen. This is Aaron Jerome again with another Jerome Electronics YouTube video. This time we're going to be talking about bubble pushing. Let's get right into it. First of all, I've got a couple of worksheet pages for students. I hand them out so that they can work along with it. This is the first page, and this is the second page. Now, De Morgan's theorem, bubble pushing. He introduced us to the shortcut that we call De Morgan's theorem. And sometimes we use the phrase demorganizing. These two rules that he came up with were if you change a line, change the sign, or inversely, if you change the sign, you have to change the line. Also, rule number two, double knots cancel. So if you ever see two knots together, they can annihilate, or you can just add two knots together and use them if you need them. We'll do that in this presentation. So bubble pushing that's De Morgan's simplification, but it is simplification not for equations like we've done before, and we'll do some more in this video, but it's for schematic circuits. In other words, you take a picture of the schematic circuit, and you can simpl simplify it visually using De Morgan's simplification. Here's how it works. First of all, let's take a AND gate, and we're going to convert this to a NAND gate, but we're going to review a couple of things about it. First of all, we're going to pull out the equations. This is basically an AND gate. It's going to multiply A times B, and that will equal X. If we need to make it a NAND gate, we're going to put a bubble on it. Remember, an, a NOT gate, an inverter, um, we often sketch it by itself with a triangle, but that triangle is not exactly the AND gate. It's the bubble. Quite often what that means is that the triangle that is often included with the NOT gate bubble is a buffer which amplifies the signal. So anyway, we need to make this a NAND gate. That means we're going to add a NOT gate, an inverter bubble, right there. And to make the equivalent equation, we simply draw a line above it indicating that all of the A times B has been inverted. First, we multiplied A times B after it went through the AND gate. Then we put it through the NOT gate. And that's the, the, the position of the NOT gate means that we inverted the whole equation, the whole, the whole A times B. Okay, now bubble pushing, what that means is, and, and this is pretty much the whole thing, you push that bubble from the output toward the input. As it, as it goes through that gate, it does two things. It will, it will flip that gate to its opposite, and it will split and put knots on both of the inputs. So as I push it in, it's going to flip that gate or invert that gate to its opposite, so an AND becomes an OR. Then the bubbles, oh, and we're going to change the sign to make the equivalent. So there it is. We've changed the sign and the gate. Next thing we're going to do is push that bubble the rest of the way through. It splits and goes to both of the inputs. Now to change the uh, equation that way, all we have to do is split the line. So really what we've done is we've changed the line and changed the sign. So this is the equivalent of an AND gate. So let's show them both together. Let's see if I can get them to show together. There they go. Okay, so we started with the AND gate and turn it to an AND gate, then push the bubbles through, and it became another type of an AND gate made with no, a NOR gate, an OR gate with, with the inverters on both of the inputs. This, and they equal each other. That's the whole point. Uh, so do the equations. These two equations equal each, equal each other. These two schematic symbols equal each other because of bubble pushing. Um, change the line, change, change the sign, and double knots cancel each other out. Okay, We can do the same thing with an OR gate. Got a regular OR gate. There's the equation. A plus B equals X. But now we're going to change it into a NOR gate by adding a NOT gate. There's the NOT gate. And there's the NOT gate over the equation. Now we're going to push that NOT gate through. It's going to change the gate to its opposite. So this is an OR. Its opposite is an AND. And then the bubble is going to split and go to each one of the inputs. So here we go. Changes the gate. And that also changes the equation. Changes the sign of the equation or the operator of the equation. And then the bubbles split and go to the inputs. That changes the line of the equation. Change the line. Change the sign. 
And that also means that these are equivalent, the schematic symbols on the left and the right, they are equivalent. They do the same work. Same thing with the equations. They are equivalent. They do the same work. Okay, that's what you really need to know. Now, this is the first example. So, um, let's pull the equation out of this first. We're going to take A and put it into an AND gate. We're going to take a B, knot it first, invert it first, and put into an AND gate. So, what are we going to get out of that? Well, we're going to get an A times not B. So, that's what we have. So, the next thing we're going to do is uh, it looks like we're going to add that to a C. Let's just put that, that's a more complex equation, so let's just put that on the outside. I put in equations to, to, uh, to preserve the parenthetical relationship, and now I'm going to pull the C through. It'll just be a C that's added, but then the whole thing will be knotted after that work has been done. So we put a knot line above everything. Now, that all equals x. Now we're going to simplify this both ways, the way we did with De, with De Morgan's theorem before in the previous videos, but we're also going to simplify it with bubble pushing. We're going to take that first bubble through. It's going to split, change the gate, and go to the inputs. Next, I can take that bubble and slide it down that line um, and do the same thing to the next one. Uh, goes through the gate, changes the gate to its opposite, and puts an input bubble on each one of the inputs. Now you see that there are two bubbles together, double knots. They cancel each other out, and this is the result of bubble pushing. Now, we haven't yet changed the equation, so what we're going to do is the, change the, the equation the same way we've always done. First, we'll start with canceling double knots. We've got two lines above the B, and we'll cancel those and rewrite the next iteration of this equation. Next thing we're going to do is change the lines and the signs. Well, there's a line above a multiply sign and a line above an addition sign, and all we have to do is change the lines and change the signs. It'll change those two signs to their opposites, and the signs will disappear. This is what we're left with. What should we do next? Let's hide the implied Let's imply the multiplication by um, hiding it, and uh, there it is. Now, at this point, um, we often think, oh, well, shouldn't we distribute that not C into the B and into the A before we're finished? Uh, we could redistribute that C, but it actually makes an equation that looks like this, and if you look at the schematic of that, it actually requires more gates. Um, if you look at it, there's one, two, three gates. If we go further and redistribute this, the C variable, and of course that doesn't count the knots, with the where we stop, that's only two gates. So um, we'll stop here, make the most simplified version of it. There are other reasons to, to simplify it further that we'll discuss later on, but for now this is good. Let's go ahead and simplify that equation. Oh, we just did. Let's go to the second simplification. And uh, this is, uh, I don't know, let's pull the equation out. That's A plus B knotted, right? A plus B knotted. And then we've got a not C that we're going to add to it and then knot it again. So we got A plus B, parenthetical relationships, we're going to add the C, and the C is knotted, and then the whole thing is knotted at the very end. And this is our resulting Boolean ex expression. Making it equal to something makes it an equation. Now, we're going to push the bubbles to simplify the schematic. Pushing the first bubble on the right through, backwards through, it'll change the gate and put an input bubble on both of the inputs. Here we go. There it is. Change the gate, put an in gate input bubble on both bubbles. Now we have two bubbles side by side. They cancel each other. That other bubble that's above there, it can slide over to the next bubble and they can uh, annihilate each other as well. So we don't really need to change the gate, uh, the remaining gate on the left. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, cancel the double knots which are above A and B and also above C. But there is on the left or on the right operator there, there will be a line above that one still. And that's it. So we cancel the double knots. 
We're going to change the lines and the signs. There's only one line and sign there. We'll change that. And then we're going to hide the multipliers. And this is what it looks like. Now, again, we could distribute that C through the parentheses, but that, again, requires more gates, and we want simple. So um, we are going to go f opt for the fewer gates version. Okay. So when we've done that, you can see that both, of, both the equation and the schematic match each other now. We've got A plus B and we're multiplying that times a C, and we have actually made a simpler e equation and a simpler schematic. Let's move on to another one that's a little bit more complex. This is uh, example number three. Okay, we're going to pull the equation through this first, and then we're going to slide the knots, slide the bubbles. Um, we're going to push the bubbles from the right to the left. Okay. So um, this AND gate multiplies A and B. And after it's multiplied them, it's going to invert them with the line. This um, gate, this AND gate, has one B input and one C input. It's going to multiply those together and then apply the line. Um, then let's do the one here at the... Now let's pull these through. Uh, what I'm going to do is add these two together. And I think before, or as I do that, I'm going to hide the not gates just to make it a little more readable, make them implied. So I will be adding those two uh, terms together as well as inverting them again. So that's what that looks like. Next thing I want to do is work on the lower level, the lower streams. Uh, this is just an A, and uh, this one is a B comes down, a B is added to a D, and it's knotted, and that's what we have. Now we're going to multiply these two, which means I need, a parent, I need to preserve the parent, parenthetical relationship with uh, this term here. So we get, we get uh, not, uh, B plus D, all knotted, times A, and then this knot gate adds another knot line at the top. Finally, what we're going to do is pull the upper equation and the lower equation through the OR gate, and that will add them together, and, and then we will put another knot line above the whole set. So they're pulling the top term through, and there's the bottom term pulled through, and a line across the whole thing. So now we're going to do the bubble pushing. We're going to take that bubble at the right. We're going to push it back through that OR gate, it will switch it to an AND gate and put a, in, a bubble on both of the inputs. Now those two inputs, that changes the gate, those two inputs are going, and uh, you can slide them, and I've slid them to be close to the other NOT gates that are there so that we can see, oh, double NOT gates, they annihilate each other. Now we have nothing to push through the middle gates in this schematic, but we can process we can still process the gates at the beginning on the left side. Pushing the bubble through the top AND gate changes it to an OR gate and ends up with bubbles on the inputs instead of on the output. Same thing with the gate below it. Push it through, bubbles on the inputs changes it to an OR gate. The OR gate on the bottom, that you push that through, puts bubbles on the inputs, and changes it to an AND gate. And this is a more simplified schematic than what we started with, and we can demonstrate that on the equation. First of all, we're going to show the dots again that we uh, hid before. There they are. Now, now we're going to deal with all of the double knots, all of the double lines. Now when we're done, the one I want you to look for is the one above the middle plus. That needs to stay there. There, of course, is another knot that will remain above the A times B, another one above the B times C, and another one above the B plus D. Should be all of those features when we're done. There they are. Next thing we're going to do is change the lines and the signs. We have hmm, lines above, one, two, three, four signs. Here they are um, without the lines and the signs changed. Okay. Um, what now? Well, um, let's reassociate. That is, let's move the parentheses around. 
and that will give us a little more clarity on what we can do with this. So I have moved the parentheses from the B times D, the not B times the not D, over to the left side of the equation. Well, right away I'm looking at those double Bs. Uh, those are redundant. One of them probably should go away. Let's hide the dots. It'll be a little easier to see. And uh, this is actually uh, probably as far as we can go with the schematic. Now, quite often, it's pretty obvious here. Students will say, well, it's so obvious that this can be further simplified. Yes, it can. But de Morgan's theorem doesn't do the simplifying. It's the de, it is the uh, B, uh, George Boole's simplification, and we're not doing that specifically here. We're simply de Morganizing both the equations and the schematic. So uh, if that's all we were doing, we'd stop here. But I want to sh show you what it looks like when we go even further. So first of all, this is what we're going to end up with. And you can see that that is exactly what happened when we simplified the schematic. We've got A plus B added with a B plus C and multiplied against a, uh, what is this? Is a not B, not D and a A, and that's exactly what we have when we simplified, and so the, the, the Boolean expression as well as the schematic, they agree with each other. Okay, so let's further simplify this and see what we get. First of all, I've removed one of those redundant Bs, and then I have distributed the not B, not D, A into all of the variables within the parentheses, the not A, again with the not B, again with the not C, and we have the equation here, uh, the lowest equation. Now, if you look closely at that, you can see in the first term, the two A's are opposites. That means they make a zero. That means they multiply by zero. That means that whole term is zero, cancels out. In the middle term, we can cancel another B. In the final term, there isn't much we can do. So, um, this is what we're left with after that process. We've eliminated the first term because of the zeros, gotten rid of one of the Bs. Now, it appears to me that we could probably pull out some sames and look at some difference. What are sames? There's an A in both of those. There's a not D in both of those. There's a not B in both of those. We can pull, we can pull those out, factor those out. What's left inside the parentheses? Well, when we pull those out, oh, this middle term that I, or this middle expression that I did, all I've done is alphabetize it so it's easier to see. So I've pulled the A, not B, D out, and I needed a placeholder for the first one. That's why there's a one in there. And then I pulled it out of the second term, and that means there's a not C left. And if you remember the regular uh, simplification rules, the Boolean simplification rules, one plus anything is just a one, and then one times anything is what you started with, and the one goes away. So this could actually be simplified down to the A, not B, not D, um, but that is Boolean simplification, not De, Morgan, uh, De Morgan's laws. And so... Um, I wanted to make sure I was right about this, so um, I went back to the original equation and built that in the simulator. Then I built the simplified version that we just came up to in the simulator, wanted to know that they both worked exactly the same, and they did. These two equations work exactly the same. So De Morgan's is not everything, but it does, it does provide a quick way to simplify either an equation with lots of knots and a schematic with knot bubbles all over the place. Okay, so it did work. That's that's kind of the point. Bubble pushing applies De Morgan's rules, but it doesn't simplify further. Here's another um, simplification problem, uh, an example. Uh, I would like to challenge my students and anybody else try to do this before I show you. In fact, you could go through and pause the video at all of the examples and see if you could do them again. I'm going to pull the equations or the terms out of these and build it into an equation. So here I'm multiplying B times C, and of course I have to knot it because of the knot bubble on the outside right side. For the next term, the one in the middle, I'm multiplying an A and a C, 
and of course the out the 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 output inverter means we put a line over those the last one is a b and an a and i'm going to invert those as well with the line okay now the next gate this one in the middle here what it does is it is going to multiply these two input terms but it's also going to add another not gate above them so there it is first one multiplied by the second one and there is a not line above those now this next gate the way i describe it to my students that this is a nand gate it's got the output inverter bubble but its ankles are tied together what does that mean well that means if i put a zero into the input then I've got a zero here going in, a zero here going in. Zero times zero is zero, and then the, the inverter inverts it to a one. In other words, we put a zero in here, it inverts it to a one. Same thing happens with a one. If we put a one on the input, one times one is one. One comes out, inverted to a zero. This is just a big universal NAND gate because what we're trying to do here is build the whole thing with just NAND gates and then simplify. So... That is the NAND gate version of a NOT gate. Um, normally you've seen them with a triangle. This is a NOT gate made of a NAND gate. Okay, so um, now that we do that, all that's really doing is taking this, e this expression that we made. We'll pull that expression through, but all it will do is add another invert line to the top of it like that. Okay, so last thing we need to do is multiply this term above by this term below, and then after that, add another not gate to those, because this is a, b, knotted. And so there's the big term, there's the multiply, there's the other term, and there's the big not line above it. Okay, now let's erase, oh, and that's an equation now, because we made it equal to something. And let's erase all of those intermediate uh, expressions. And now we're going to do the bubble pushing. Going to take that first bubble, going to push it through. It splits, goes to each one of the inputs. Next, it changes the gate. The next thing we're going to do is acknowledge that this whole gate here is just a bubble. So I'm going to eliminate that. And it's just a bubble. It's the same thing. Next thing I can do is put those two bubbles together. When they come together, they can annihilate, and we're left with the rest of the bubbles and the rest of the gates. What else can we do? Well, um, I think what I'll do next is shorten the whole expression so I can put the output equation to the right. Now, um, what's next? I think I will push this bubble over so that its double bubble annihilates with the other bubble. I'm going back to the upper stream. I'm going to push that through. It changes the gate and puts an input bubble on the input side. Now, those two bubbles, they can also just annihilate. And this is our simplified result, simplified due to De Morgan's theorem. Um, now I'm going to process the equation to make it the simple version that matches the schematic. So first thing I'm going to do is remove the double knots. There are three above this sign, so there should be one when we're done. There's one above this sign, should be one when we're done. All these knots should annihilate all four of these, should annihilate all four of these, should annihilate. Hopefully you have a nice picture. If you want to sketch this in, you could pause this video. But Without the knots, the, the double knots, uh, it looks like this. I left, I left the uh, knots that remain at different elevations just so they're a little easier to see. Okay, now we're going to change the lines and the signs. The signs that have lines over them, we're going to invert them and erase the signs. So now the, the multiplication on the left was changed to a plus, no knot above it. And the, plus, uh, the multiplication near the middle there was changed to a plus and no longer a knot above it. Next thing I'm going to do is hide the dots, uh, imply the multiplication so it's easier to read, and uh, then we have this. And this equation absolutely matches the schematic. It is b times c plus b or a times c plus a times b, and that is equal to x. So that is the um, the fourth example 
simplification. Now, um, I want to talk about gates again. Let's go back to these gates. And, uh, of course, these two gates currently, they equal each other. They are equivalent gates because they are the same gate. But, um, if you remember, pushing the bubbles makes them look different, but they still do the same work. These two gates do the same thing. But what I want to talk about is nesting dual input gates with multiple input gates. Um, I haven't mentioned it a lot, but these two gates have two inputs. There are other gates that have more than two inputs, and these are also found in chips. And so here is a triple input AND, actually it's a triple input NAND gate, and we can actually replicate this with double input NAND gates, and that's what, here's what that looks like. This is a technique called nesting, because if you have only two input gates, or there are reasons to only have two input gates, this is the same thing. These two, the gate on the left and the, the gate assembly on the right, do the same thing. Um, to simulate the one on the left, we have nested the one on the right. That's how it's done. So I'm bubble pushing to show that that is the case. Uh, the bubbles went through, changed the gate, and then I slid that other bubble up. It's going through again. It changed the gate. And notice that this is a triple input gate that has inputs on all three. So does the other one. When you push the bubbles through, it splits up. So there's a bubble on the input of each, and it also changes the gate. These are still equivalent. You have such things as four input NAND gates, and here is the official way to nest four input NAND gates. You're just anding ands together. Um, so let's push the bubbles through. Uh, they split. They change the gate uh, to its opposite. So the and becomes an or or a plus. Multiply becomes a plus. Then those uh, those those not gates. They can slide along the the lines, and there they are at the output of the two and gates. We can push them through as well. They will change both of the in. They will change the gates to their opposites, and put bubbles on all of the inputs. Same thing happens on the right side. We can push a bubble through. It flips the entire gate to its opposite and puts bubbles on the inputs. And so these things are also equivalent. Let's now. This example that I'm giving you shows a triple input NAND gate. Um, Hopefully you're thinking of how that might um, morph into its OR gate equivalent, but uh, as a spoiler, that gate isn't actually going to change. So here we go. Uh, what are we going to do? We're going to pull the equation out of there. There's A times B times C, and it's knotted. Next thing we're going to do is acknowledge that there is a D going in and being multiplied with the previous term above into that gate and they will be multiplied together and another inversion line will be added to the whole set when we're done. Okay, so uh, next we'll go down to the lower stream. There is F times G and it's knotted and uh, that's what that gate did. Going upward now there is an E that goes into the upper uh, input of the upper NOR gate we're going to nor these nor these together, which means we're going to add them together first and and add another inversion line. Next, we ord them together through this gate, and uh, of course, there's another knot on the output of that, so we're going to have to put a line above that. And there it is. Now uh, there is not. This is just another one of those. Um, not gates inverters made out of a uh, NAND gate. So all we do is repeat the equation and put another not line above it. And then we're ready to simplify. We're going to push the bubbles back through and see uh, what they do to this to the schematic. And then we will demorganize the equation and make sure that the schematic matches the equation. So here we go. I'm just eliminating that uh, 
hardware for the AND gate because it's just a knot bubble. And now I can slide those two knot bubbles together. They, of course, annihilate, so that doesn't change the gate. Going to the middle column of gates, and let's push them through. Uh, oh, I just made more space for myself. Pushing those through puts inputs on the inputs and also changes the gate. Same thing below. Inputs are knotted and changes the gate. We can slide those bubbles, just doing it all at once now, because the rest is pretty easy. We get those pairs, they annihilate, and we're done. That is the simplified version. Let's, see, let's simplify the Boolean equation and see if that uh, matches what we've done with our bubble pushing. So, first thing we're going to do is show all the dots. There they are. It's the same equation, but we're showing where the multiplication dots are. Multiplication, uh, we call those operators or signs. I just call them dots. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the double knots. There's a lot of double knots. Odd numbers leave one knot line. Even numbers, they all go away. So there should be, with an odd number set above the plus and the E, there should still be a line above the plus and the E. Four knots above the F times G, they all go away. Two above the plus means that they will annihilate and the plus will not be changed. Three above the D, also three above the multiplier here. That means that there will be one left above them. And later on, we'll change the line and change the sign. Um, uh, the remainder is four lines. They will all go away. You can pause the video if you want to sketch this in. Here's what it looks like after we've after we've eliminated the double knots there is a line there are just two lines left so what we're going to do is change the lines and signs uh, the line above the multiplication operator there near the middle should change as well as the line above the plus at the end now we're done with that we if we hide the dots it's a little easier to read i've also hidden the parentheses because it's not necessary to preserve the parenthetical relationships any longer what do we have hmm we have pretty much as far as we can go um we have got a b c plus a knotted d plus e times not at E times F times G, and they match. So we know we've done our bubble pushing correctly. All right, so I just want to talk a little bit about the fact that all of these are equivalents. <clears throat> I'm not going to ask my students to memorize all of these equivalents because there's another way to look at it that makes it so you don't have to do all that memorization. So what about pushing bubbles the other direction? Sometimes, for example, if I want to show that this AND gate is equivalent to whatever this beast is, um, <clears throat> we might want to push some bubbles the other direction, and I'll show you how. So we're going to show that these gates are equivalent, and we're going to do it from left to right this time. Remember, double bubbles can pop in and out of existence. So if there aren't any, we can add them in pairs. Okay, that's what I'm doing to the first one at the top. I added double bubbles. Well, when the bubbles flow through the gate to change the gate, we only take two um, parallel bubbles. We take a column of bubbles instead of a row of bubbles. So two bubbles will go through. They'll change the gate. They'll merge and become one bubble on the output, just the opposite of what we've been doing so far. Okay, bubbles pass through the gate in, pair, in pairs, and then the gate also changes its nature, causes the gate to morph to its opposite, and so you can see now those gates indeed are equivalent um, because they are the same. Um, how did I do it? Well, I added a pair of not inverters to the top line and a pair to the bottom line. Two went through the gate, two stayed on the outside, and they equal what's on the right side. Let's do the next one. I'm going to add a couple of bubbles there. Two will go through and change the gate. They'll merge and become a single bubble on the other side. Changing the gate. There it is. And now you can see, simply by adding double bubbles, because they can pop into existence, uh, these two match. 
What about the next one? Well, I'm only going to add the double bubbles to the bottom line. There's nothing illegal about that. And that allows me to have a column of bubbles that can go through, pass through the gate, merge together, change the gate to its opposite, and now they match. They, the gates match on both sides. What about this next one? Well, we don't need to add a pair of bubbles to this next one. Just run those bubbles through. There they are. Changes the gate. And now they are equivalent again. This last one, we're putting the double bubbles. They're appearing at the bottom, giving us a column of bubbles that can go through the gate. And they did, and change this gate to its opposite. So now it's an AND gate. Double bubbles on the output. We're going to annihilate them. And you can see that these two at the bottom also equal each other. Okay, that's it for me. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope this made sense. I hope it makes a, a lot of sense. If it didn't, go through and uh, do it again with the worksheet. Pause the video as needed. Thank you for watching. This is Aaron Jerome at Jerome Electronics. We'll see you next time.